السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يومكم سعيد أعزائي الطلبة حان موعد درس الكيمياء لهذا اليوم ندعوكم من مدرسة أورينت الافتراضية لمتابعتنا وأرجو من الله تعالى بأن يوفقني لأطرح الأفكار بأسلوب ممتع لتصلوا إلى الفائدة المرجوة من هذا الدرس أعزائي الطلبة بعد أن أنهينا القسم الأكبر من الكيمياء العضوية أحببت اليوم أن أريكم بعض التجارب التي توضح لنا طريقة تحضير حمض الخليك أو الأسيتيك أو أيضا التسمية النظامية له حمض التنويك وتحضير الكحول بالتجربة سأريكم ذلك من خلال التجربة حيث حضرت لكم فيديوهين ليريكم طريقة تحضير الحمض والكحول دعونا نرى سويا التجربتين التاليتين يستخدم فطر الخميرة في صناعة الكحول حيث يضاف إلى محلول سكري داخل قارورة ثم يترك في مكان دافئ نلاحظ تصاعد غاز ثاني أكسيد الكربون الذي يعكر ماء الجير وتتغير رائحة المحلول إلى رائحة الكحول هذه العملية تسمى التخمر الكحولي طبيعي نضع محلول كربونات الصوديوم في بالون هادي عبأنا البالون بمسحوق كربونات الصوديوم يحدث ما هو مبين هنا والان كما نرى فان التفاعل يحدث كربونات الصوديوم تتفاعل مع حمض الكلور لانتاج غاز ثاني اكسيد الكربون الموجود حاليا في البالون So let's take a look at the mild oxidation of ethanol, a primary alcohol. I'm going to take first of all 10 cubic centimeters of one molar sulfuric acid, one molar or one mole per cubic decimeter, I'm adding it to a pear shaped flask as you see. So dilute sulfuric acid. Here's a stemless funnel which is useful for adding the solid. This is the solid. I've taken here three grams of sodium dichromate, Na2Cr207. And using the stemless funnel, I'm adding it to the dilute sulfuric acid in the Persia flask. Tap the funnel to make sure it's all in. And swirl the contents to dissolve the sodium dichromate in the dilute sulfuric acid. So we have here what's known as acidified dichromate. That's our oxidizing agent. Look at the color. It's an orange colored solution. It behaves as the oxidizing agent. And in oxidizing our ethanol, it will itself be reduced and reduced to a dark green color. Here's my ethanol. 
I've got five cubic centimeters of ethanol, and I'm adding that now to the flask, a little bit at a time. You may begin to see the darkening of this orange colored solution. We have a redox reaction taking place. The ethanol is being oxidized. You'll see shortly that it has hydrogen atoms removed from its structure to create an aldehyde ethanol. It's a redox reaction because oxidation and reduction always occur together. As electrons cannot exist on their own, they need to be coming from one species and onto another. So the chemical that takes the electrons is reduced. The chemical which gives up the electrons is oxidized. So the ethanol is being oxidized and the dichromate ions are being reduced. Plus and water. Okay, back then to the practical itself. So the dichromate has been dissolved. The ethanol has been added slowly in stages. You can already see that the orange color has changed. I'm adding a few anti-bumping granules to promote smooth boiling here. Just a, just a pinch of anti-bumping granules. The shape of the flask, per shape, helps to prevent bumping as well. Bumping is caused by gas dissolved in a liquid coming out as the temperature of the liquid rises because as the temperature of the liquid rises, the gas is less soluble. Those bubbles should come out quickly and form large bubbles. Bumping will occur. The anti-bumping anti granules are little insoluble stones that help the bubbles to come out as a steady stream of bubbles. So here's our lead big condenser. Down at the bottom there, that's where the water goes in, up there where I'm pointing, goes and comes out at the top. The rule is pump water uphill in terms of the condenser. So the water goes in at the bottom and out at the top. You'll see a rubber tube to the right there. That's there as a safety precaution. If some vapor should come across that doesn't condense, it that can be uh, that tube will carry them into the sink where they'll be rinsed away with water. So again, I'm showing where the water comes in, goes round the jacket of the condenser and out at the top. And there's that little that rubber tube that'll take any vapor that doesn't condense in the Libby condenser away into the sink and it'll be washed away safe. So we only use gentle heat here. And I'm only going to collect two or three cubic centimeters of the product, which is ethanol. So this is referred to as heat and distill. You're heating and distilling it over immediately. In contrast, when we look at further oxidation to form the carboxylic acid, it will be reflux distillation. So you can see the orange color has changed. It's difficult to make out the green color at this stage. You'll see it a little bit later in the experiment. So at this stage, the ethanol has formed and it'll come across as a vapor. And you can see it now beginning to come across as the distillate. The ethanol will vaporize over. The vapor will enter the Libri condenser where it'll cool and condense. And the droplets will run down the condenser and into this collection flask here. You can see that ethanol is a colorless clear liquid. And just to prove that I have got ethanol, I'm going to take that liquid and do a test for an aldehyde. And the test I'm going to use here is the test with failing solution. Now failing solution has to be made up fresh. It's made from so-called failings one and failings two. So there's my ethanol, colorless clear liquid. In a moment, you'll see that I mix together feelings one and two. I've got a beaker there ready to receive the product just so that I can pour it in to the test tube later. That's my product, ethanol, formed by the oxidation of ethanol, the mild oxidation of ethanol. To make the feeling solution fresh, you take feelings one, a blue solution as you see here. 
and take a couple of cubic centimeters of that in a test tube and add to it feeling solution 2, which is a colorless liquid. When you do so, you'll get some light blue uh, solid formed. And you continue adding in a dropwise fashion feelings 2 until the precipitate just redissolves. So watch how this works. Taking a couple of cubic centimeters of feelings 1, feeling solution 1. And now add, in a dropwise fashion, feeling solution 2. This is essentially the reaction between copper sulfate solution and ammonia solution, forming the copper tetraamine ion in solution. Now, initially, it's a two stage reaction. As the first drops go in, we get insoluble copper hydroxide, a light blue precipitate. And then, as I add excess of feelings to ammonia solution, that precipitate will redissolve, and I'll form copper tetraamine, which is soluble and is a deep blue or royal blue solution. So look for the precipitate dissolving. The solution will then become clear. It will be very dark, but it will be clear. There you see it. It's a royal blue solution. So we've got our feeling solution ready to do a test for an aldehyde. All I need to do is to add my product, ethanol. The reaction occurs quite quickly. You, you place it in a hot water bath, but it takes just uh, less than a minute to begin to see, if you do have an aldehyde, to begin to see the appearance of a green, sorry, appearance of a brick red precipitate It'll go from blue through green to form a, a, bl a brick red precipitate. So let's see how this works. You're going to see it in, in real time here. So we add to our freshly prepared feeling solution, just add a few drops of your aldehyde. And if I have indeed made an aldehyde by this process, it should all happen pretty quickly. So I place it now into a hot water bath. And this is what you see. Watch for the royal blue solution, which is clear. It'll start to go cloudy. You'll initially see it go green in color. And if you look at the top, you can already begin to see the brick red precipitate forming there. So I proved that we have indeed produced an aldehyde, ethanol, by the mild oxidation of the primary alcohol, ethanol. That's the finished result. I pour a little bit out of that solution. It's easier for you to see the brick red precipitate that is formed. That's a positive test for an aldehyde. أعزائي لقد أنهينا درسنا لهذا اليوم وأتمنى من كل منكم أن يحاول أن يضع النقاط المهمة الموجودة في الدرس ويراجعها بمفرده. حتى يحصل على الفائدة المرجوة من درسنا أشكركم وإلى اللقاء في درس قادم بإذن الله